good day, favorite church. Who's excited to praise Jesus? Hey, it's Sunday and it's the best place to be. And if you're watching online, come on, get up on your feet. We're gonna praise Jesus. Let's go. Come on, put your hands up. From the ashes we rise to beautiful life, everything is made new. We lift up our eyes, our hands lifted high, your majesty is our view. Come on, sing it out. We are letting go of all, all the things that we You will always lead us through. Jesus will take your hand, for you will lead us to the promised land. Flying up high with you, over it all, we're gonna soar with you. We're gonna soar. Oh, come on, move it. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Jesus, are you ready? I'm gonna praise you forever. Come on, let's hit up. I'm gonna praise you forever. Church, we will see the praise God in this place. Joy is in the room. Peace is in the room. Come on, it's time to dance. It's time to move. Hey. Joy is in the house. Let's say. This is the day you made. So now we rejoice in God. Joyce in God. You are more than enough, more than enough for me. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I, when I stand in, in your presence. I have everything I need. Join me, church. 
The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's more than a feeling. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, tell your soul today. Oh, my soul, bless His name. All that is within me say, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy, oh, 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 Jesus, come one day, cause you are worthy of all, worthy of all my praise, yes you are, you are faithful to your promise, you are strong when I am, when I stand in your presence, I have everything I Joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's more than a feeling. Joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh my soul, oh my soul, bless His name. All that is within me say, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, every day. amazing good morning everyone welcome to favor church if this is your first time we're so glad that we get to spend this sunday morning with you we are a church that carries the joy of god do you believe that 
That's awesome. We've never met yet. If you're watching here online or in the house, my name is Jay, and I'm a part of the amazing team here. And we're just so glad that we get to spend this day with you. We'll continue our worship in just a bit, but like we do every single Sunday, we want to give each and every person, whether you're here in the house physically or watching online, an opportunity to get prayed for. Who here is carrying anything? No one, no one. I know I am, and maybe you're watching online and you are. And we want to give you a space to actually ask someone for help, to pray for you, to stand in faith with you. Because we believe in a God that is greater than our, than our problems. We believe in a God that is greater than what we are going through right now. So if you have a need, I want to encourage you, ask for a prayer. We're going to open this front side and the sides on the blue lights. And in the middle section, we actually have a section there that you can get prayed for where our leaders and our pastors will be there. If you need a physical healing in specific, you can go to my left-hand side, your right, and we have our pastors who are gonna anoint you with oil and pray for you for that miracle of physical healing. I just wanna encourage you, it says in 1 Peter 5, 7, to cast all of our cares, all of our burdens, all of our anxieties to Jesus because He cares for you. It says in Amplified Translation, He cares with you with deepest affection. And I wanna speak that over you this morning, that our God cares for you with deepest affection. So if you have a need right now, you can start coming down the aisles and asking for prayer because I believe that today is a day that our God will show up. It's not about what He can do. It's not entirely about that. It's about the faith that we have. And I want to encourage you, why don't we stir up the atmosphere of faith wherever you are, if you're watching online and you're here in the room. Our God is a God of miracles. He's a God of signs and wonders. And I want to encourage you, what if today is the day that you actually get your breakthrough? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. He is going to move. But the question is, do you have faith to believe in what He can do? Because His Word is true, His Word is perfect, and He says He will do what He can do. So right now, why don't you stir the atmosphere of faith in your heart. Start calling on the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we honor You in this place right now. Do something that only You can do. Lord, to every troubled heart, I pray the peace that comes from You. Do something that no one else can. Father, I pray that the, the way we came inside would not be the way that we leave this place. Meet us, encounter us. Right now, we call on your name, Jesus. Mighty God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, our Messiah. We ask for you right now to come, come, come and invade, come and fill, doing something that only you can do. We worship you in this place. We honor you. We welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, if you need to eat, continue walking. And for the rest of us, why don't we continue to worship? Sing a song of ever 
to the Lamb. Now we walk in freedom. If you walk in freedom, if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the church all together in this place can we just lift our hands to our holy God who deserves our praise today we will lift up our struggles we will lift up our concerns to him but today let's just lift up our hands to our holy God who's worthy of our praise and let's sing his holy name in the space in your own words today come on oh yes you are holy God oh you are holy we take this moment to sing it. 
sing about you God sing for you Jesus you are holy and worthy of our praise you are worthy God oh you are holy you are holy I'm so unlike you Lord, Lord. Oh, you are holy and worthy oh my praise no name is higher in this place no name is greater holy worthy yes you are worthy no name is higher no name is greater holy worthy no name is high no name is greater holy worthy come on let's take a moment to declare this no name is high no name is greater holy. worthy worthy no name no name is high no name Worthy, no name is high, no name is greater. No name is greater. Say, holy, worthy, worthy. No name, no name is high, no name is greater.
No name is greater than the name of Jesus. Jesus, be exalted, God, be exalted, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, oh, we honor you, Lord. of the Lord forever to gaze upon the beauty of our Lord and so today I pray that we, may we never lose the wonder of His presence that you know God is here He's already here He's already moving but may we never grow familiar of His presence Amen and may we grow hungrier for the presence of God and so today wherever you are whether you're online or you're here God, why don't you begin to just lift your voice and continue to be in the attitude of worship. We're gonna seek His face, gaze upon the beauty and the splendor of our God. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We worship you.
let this be our prayer today. Oh, the beauty and the gift of your friendship is unlike anything I'll ever know. We pray, may I never lose the wonder of your presence. May I always stand in all who you are. Oh, the beauty. in this room. I want to lift your worship, lift your worship. I want to lift up a worship to the King. Oh God, move in this place. We want to see you face to face. Oh, you are worthy of our praise. Oh, we'll never
never rush this moment
God, Jesus, you are so good. We lift you high above all other names. The name above all other names. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Psalm 40, David says, but may all who search for you Lord, be filled with joy and gladness in You. May those who love Your salvation repeatedly shout, The Lord is great. Come on, that bit. May those who love Your salvation repeatedly shout, The Lord is great. The Lord is great. That is our cry this morning. That is our declaration this morning that the Lord is great. And He is greatly to be praised. You are greatly to be praised, Jesus. You are greatly to be praised. You are greatly to be praised. The Lord is great. The Lord is great powerful time of worship, us lifting our eyes above what's going on in our own worlds, lifting it up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We take time to honour and worship Him because He alone is worthy of it. As I was praying before, I really sensed and saw this picture of a big wave coming. And I was kind of saying, God, I don't think I really want to share that. I'd prefer not to share that. Um, it's easier if I just, you know, they just end with a big woo, hallelujah, and then I move on. And I felt God said, no, I need you to just encourage a few people today. And I saw this picture of a wave come and just take people out. And in Australia, where I grew up, we have some pretty crazy waves where I have been winded before by a wave hitting me in the stomach. Oh, and you get kind of, they say dumped and you get rolled around in the wave and which way's up I'm trying to find that which way's up and I just saw that there was people in this place who got hit by that wave the wave of life this week it's just come and bam. and another word we use in Australia a lot is it pummeled you pummeled it, it hit you hard it knocked you right over and I just sense there's people here this week and you've been hit by a wave of life. And I just felt Holy Spirit really strongly say, Kate, okay, don't move on until you pray for these people. You know who you are because it was really hard to get here this morning. You know who you are because you're standing right now with tears going down your face going, oh, thanks God. Thank you that you wanted to encourage me this morning. With every head bowed and eyes closed, would you lift your hands across this place if you're saying, that's me. That's me, I've just been hit this week. Maybe you're here and you've had a fabulous week, praise God. Maybe it was a so-so, it was okay, that's good. But right now, we're taking a moment just to lift up people that have been hit hard by life and it happens. It happens when we least expect it. You gotta know every person with your hands raised right now that God sees you, that He loves you. Oh yeah, I know that, Kate. No, no, no. He loves you. He sees you. He sees what you're going through. I felt to read out Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. It says, have you never heard have you never understood that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth? I'm saying this over you. I'm speaking this over you. He, God, never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of His understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths, even those young ones get tired and weary. And young men will fall in exhaustion, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk 
and not grow faint. If that is you with your arms raised, Isaiah 40 is for you today. The Lord's comfort for His people. And come on, every person, if you don't have your hands raised, would you pray with me right now? Would you pray for these amazing people in our community, in our family right now? Maybe you've not even come before. Maybe you're watching online. Oh, we pray in the mighty Name of Jesus that You would send Holy Spirit right with you now. That You would be full of His Spirit. You would be full of His power in Jesus' Name. That the very same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, oh, it's alive in You. And You would feel the strength and the power of God right now. That it would infuse into You strength in Jesus' Name. Joy would be Your strength today. Oh, and we just declare that these people, God, even though they've been hit by the the storms of life, the wave of life has come. We declare that You are great, that You are great and You are holding them. You are holding them during this time, that You have not left them, that You have not forsaken them, but You are their God. You are the same yesterday, today and forevermore. So I declare that they would know that You are God. You are their Father, Holy Spirit, that You would be closer than a brother right now. We lift You up in this place. We lift You high in this place. And come on, we're gonna declare it one more time. How great He is. Come on, how great. We sing it together. How great. you are right with them. Right now, Holy Spirit, as you leave, you're with them. And we commit this time to you. We thank you for a wonderful rest of the service together. Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts. We open our hearts up to you. We say, have your way in Jesus' Name. We all said, Amen. Amen. Woo, you guys can take your seats. Thank you. Wait a second, you too. Cello. If you don't know, if you first time, maybe you're here. This is our worship pastors. <laughs> PJ and Cello, my dear, I love you. Uh, they're incredible. And I just, I'm just like a proud mama. Whenever they lead together, I am just overjoyed. Uh, but it was our amazing PJ, our worship pastor's birthday yesterday. PJ, we love you. Happy birthday. We love you so much. You're loyal. You're a good friend. You're an amazing pastor, leader, and and God's just got so many great things in store for you. You know that, but I just want to speak that over you again. We love you so much. Happy birthday. I just love them so much, and I love it when they lead. It's so nice. Anyway. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're watching online, we're so glad that you're with us. We're gonna continue to worship the Lord by taking up our tithes and our offerings. I love giving to God. I trust Him with my finances. And I encourage you to trust Him. Give with conviction and not compulsion this morning. He is a good God. He is worthy of our trust, amen? 
And so you can find this uh, envelope, tithes and offerings. It says it's in front of you. Hopefully it's in front of you on the chair uh, in front of you. You can grab that if you're gonna give via cash. I encourage you, if you are gonna give via cash, do not leave it on your chair full of cash. Uh, Put it in our giving station. It's located outside these doors on the way out after the service. It's a little silver box. You'll find it if you may even trip over it. I've tripped over it a few times. Uh, Or just ask one of our host team to help you find the giving station. Don't leave it on your chair, but give it over there after the service. But however you're gonna give to God, we can, you can go to give.favor.church however, anytime this week, you can go even now, right now. But if you're giving to God, would you just place your hand on your heart as we pray? Lord, we just love You so much. We just praise You. We praise You for who You are, God. And we trust You with our finances. And right now for every person giving to You, every household represented, every young person, God, raging out to the seasoned person here, Lord, giving to You. We just thank You, Lord, that You would bless them, favour them, God. And I thank You, Lord, that every peso and dollar given would be used to multiply. God, it would be multiplied to see Your Kingdom advance, Your Kingdom expand in this place. God, all over the world, we believe, God, that those giving today, it's gonna have an impact on people coming to know You, Jesus. So we trust You, we give to You cheerfully today. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, Amen, Amen. Well, again, it's so lovely that you're here at church today. If we haven't met, my name is Kate, and I'm a pastor here at Favour. And uh, if this is your first time online, you're watching us right now live, or maybe it's sometime in the next few years, welcome. We're so glad that you joined us today. And if it's your first time at a Favour service in person right now, welcome. I've got some of my friends who are gonna come down the front here. In their hands is a little tote bag. And we've actually put this together for any person. It's our, you are our VIP. You are our very important people today. And we put this together just for you. It's a free gift. Inside is some information about our church, why it is we do what we do, how to get involved in Favour Church and just some other goodies inside. And again, this is a free gift. We would love to get this into your hand just for coming today. If maybe you brought someone along, you can slip up your hand for them. But if you're saying, Kate, I would love one of those bags. This is my first ever Favourite Church service. Would you give us a wave right now as our team head down the aisles? We really wanna make you welcome, feel welcome this morning. Church, would you just give everyone a big welcome? Everyone online, we're so glad that you're here again. But if you're in the room, we're making our way, we're running. We're running, we're seeking, we're finding you. Hey, 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 oh yes, oh. Can we just welcome all of our new people one more time? If we missed you, just give us a wave. We will find you. Um, But if you grabbed one of those bags, you can reach inside right now. Inside is a little black card. It says, welcome to favour. And if you flip that over on the other side, there's actually room to fill your details in. And the reason we do this is because we actually really would love to get to know you. We don't just say that, but we really would love to hear your story, hear a little bit about your life, how you came to find yourself in a Crown Plaza ballroom on this Sunday. Uh, If you would like to come and place that in the box in our VIP area outside in the foyer after the service, you're welcome to do that. But if you would like, you can hand it in to one of our VIP team. They have a lanyard with VIP on it. And again, we would just really love to get to know you. They'll just chat with you and just hear a little bit about your story. But thank you so much again for coming. God bless you. Pray that you have a wonderful rest of the service. Amen. Well, we are a really friendly church. We try and and, and we've tried to create that as a culture and I believe that it really is a culture. And so we're gonna continue to live that out. We are gonna be friendly. And so we take two minutes every service to actually stand to our feet, find someone that you haven't greeted this morning and say hi to them, make them feel welcome. Ask them what their name is, ask them how their week was. So from the front right to the back, Come on, would you stand to your feet right now? Just be really friendly. Find someone you don't know. Have a little walk around. There's some candy going around. Grab some candy and make someone feel welcome this morning. Everyone online will be back in two minutes.
Okay, that is two minutes. If uh, you had a good conversation with someone, maybe ta- uh, find them, take them out for lunch after the service, or take them out for coffee. I love being a part of what God's doing in our church and such a friendly church. Well, our, we had a favor fun day, which was our social connect time two weeks ago. We had an incredible time. Anybody there, would you just give us a wave, give us a shout? Did you enjoy yourselves? There we go, there's some pictures. We had an incredible time. All of our connect groups are socially getting together and uh, doing, uh, there was a big picnic lunch. I th- uh, the season had a potluck and we had the mums, the favorite mums sitting by the pool watching all their kids swim. Lots of dance uh, presentations and competitions and it was just such a wonderful day. So thank you so much for coming out for that. But if you have not joined a connect group yet, maybe you've been coming to Favour for a while. Maybe this is your first day and you're like, I'd love to join whatever a connect group is. A connect group is a small group in our church. It is how you stay connected with God, the community and church. And so we do a Bible study. It's a short Bible study, but it's also a way to just really get alongside one another. It becomes family. It's not just a small group, it's family. And so I encourage you to actually get a part of one. You can sign up. There's more information on our news in just a moment, but you can go to favor.church forward slash connect and sign up for a connect group. You will really enjoy it. I promise you'll enjoy connect groups. They're amazing. We're doing a new series that's coming up called Habits of a Healthy Heart by Craig Groeschel. So we're going through that series. We're going to have a Bible plan and it's going to be fantastic. Going through different topics like self-examination and godly sorrow and cultivating steadfastness. So Who knows, we need to learn more about that in Jesus' Name. So if you're not in a Connect, sign up. We'll tell you more about it in the news. But just a moment, we've got our Executive Pastor, our Generations Pastor, Paul Carolino coming up. I am so blessed every time Paul preaches. You will be blessed, get ready to receive. But first, let's check out Favour News. Favor fam, welcome to this week's edition of Favor News. For all the info and announcements I'm about to mention, visit favor.church slash Manila News. Let's go. Join us for a night of fun, community, and culture building at Family Night happening at the Favor Studio on April 24. This event is for all of our church's leaders, volunteers, and those who want to get more involved in the life of our church. Also, with Favor Conference just weeks away, we're rallying all teams and doing something fun to warm us up for a conference. Doors open at 6.30, so make sure to RSVP for your food stub, and we'll see you there. If you have kids under the age of 13 that haven't been dedicated yet, Child Dedication Sunday is happening this coming May 5 during our Sunday services at Crown Plaza. This is a special family moment for our church to witness as we dedicate our kids to God. It's also a time where we pray for wisdom, strength, and grace for the parents and guardians as they make a commitment in front of our community to raise their kids to love Jesus. If you'd like to have your child dedicated, sign up today. Only limited slots per service. Hey, Favorite Church, it's Octavia Cormier. And Brandon Cormier. And we are so excited to be with you guys for Favorite Conference coming up in May. Hey, if you have not registered, make sure to register because we do not want to miss meeting you and being with you all. It's been several years since I've been with the Favor fam. And it's my first time. First time in Manila. We're gonna have a blast. It won't be the same if you are not in the house. We cannot wait to see you for Favor Conference 2024. It's Connect Week. Bring out your phones right now and quickly text your connects that you'll be seeing them this week. Connect is the heart of our church where we're able to do life with one another, grow and learn together, and of course, have fun. Every connect is different and attending one can be awkward at first, but don't let that stop you from missing out on community. This is your sign to join a connect today. Sign up through this link. Next week, April 21, we have a special guest, Pastor Tony Suarez, who will be preaching. He's an evangelist, preacher, and author from the U.S. He loves the Holy Spirit and desires for a great move of God. Invite someone new to church because we're going to have a great Sunday. There are so many exciting things happening in the life of our church. 
All the links you need from today's announcements are on favor.church slash news, or you can drop by our info booth at the foyer after our service to ask any questions, share a testimony, or volunteer for a team. Stay updated by visiting our website or by following our social media channels popping up on your screen <coughs> right now. And that is it for Favor News. Thank you. You can sit down. I'm just a vessel, just a vessel today. You can sit down. Um, my name is Paul, if you haven't met yet, and I'm the vessel of the Lord today. Lord, use me in Jesus' name. Um, I want to start with uh, just greeting a happy, happy birthday to my auntie, Elma, who is right there on the corner. He's, she sent me to high school and college. When um, my dad passed away, she really took care of us. And my other auntie, Auntie Adjung, is very kind to me. Is also here. Love you. Love you so much. Thank you for all that you, you've done for me. <laughs> She's waving. Love you. <laughs> um, I want to start with a little survey. Just to check how healthy our church is. Would that be okay? Could you raise your hand if you do any sort of exercise regularly? Like if you do any sort of exercise regularly. Wonderful. Wow. Raise your hand, uh, uh, put, just put down my hand. Okay, raise your hand if you don't do any sort of exercise regularly. Come on, raise your hand. Come on, if you don't believe in exercise in this place, lift up your hands. Uh, I don't want to make this about me, but for a good nine years, I was super consistent with my exercise. I was a part of our basketball team when I was in high school. And then in the UAAP street dance team when I was in college, I was very fit, very fit. For a good nine years, I was active. I stopped in the year 2022 when I married Janine. I got the trophy, I'm good, right? And so no exercise anymore. I'm sorry, Janine, we're working on it. But there was a year, I remember, year 2019, where Albie and I, one of my best friends in the world, wow, I don't see it here. Albie's just right here. Uh, we, we, we would work out almost every day. We would go to a gym. We would work out every day. And there was this phase that we, we called our bulking season. Bulking phase, right? We're trying to get those muscles in. We're drinking protein shake, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Albie still got it. I lost it all. Right? And so we're working on it. We were thin, scrawny boys. And then for a few months, we're working on this bulking phase, doing all the things we need to do. And you know that if you're a Christian who exercises, you know that you do it for the glory of God, right? You do it for the glory of God. But as well, it feels really wonderful when other people start to acknowledge it, right? But it feels, it feels so demotivating when people just talk smack about you. And so Albie and I were not sensitive people. Like we're really, we really have thick skin. I remember one day in this bulking season that we had, we felt like we were making some progress. We were both walking to church. And then one tita made a comment to us. A very, very subtle comment. She said this, wow, you're so thin, huh? To both of us. And because again, we are thick skinned, soft hearts. We, we let that comment go for 10 seconds. <laughs> and then we looked at each other. How dare she say that? Uh, I'm not going to name names of who said what, if it's Albi or me. But one person definitely said, wow, she should look at herself. <laughs> you know, some of you know both of us, and one person has a quicker response than the other and um, I think it's a it's a given there and so like we just let that comment go for 10 seconds and harbored on it and then I remember the next time we were going to gym who's thin who's thin huh? who's thin it is what Albie and I would do we're, when we're in the gym and people would come and work out when people who are more buff than buffer than us would come in and would do like Mirror, when you post in the mirror, they'd show their six-pack abs in there. Here's what Albie and I would do, because we're very championing of people. We would talk about them. We're like, they're models, of course. That's their job. Like, if that was our job, we'd be like that. And then we'd say something like, um, 
if we had the money to buy those protein shakes they're drinking, those keratin, all that kind of stuff, we, we would be like that. But man, we're serving the Lord. We don't need to be like that. Of course, man, we're serving God here and we're doing pull-ups. But we're really, we're really just, um, I don't know how to sugarcoat it anymore. We're just bitter. <laughs> That's what it is. And, and I, think, I think, though, bitterness a lot of times... Um, can be really, really obvious, but for most of the time, it's actually quite subtle. But you know that the, the, the word bitterness in the Bible, the original Greek word actually indicates a poison. Because bitterness is poisonous. That's why the Bible talks about let all bitterness. Not some, not a few, not just for the tita who called you that you, and you told you to gain weight, but all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, resentment, strife, fault finding, <laughs> and slander be put away from you along with every kind of malice. It didn't say some, it said all. Why? Because it's poisonous. And I believe there's a reason why bitterness was the first one mentioned there because wrath, anger, clamor, and slander always starts with bitterness always starts with bitterness. And here's the thing. You might have let go of your anger. You might have let go of our, of our wrath. We might have said, oh, we've forgiven them. But deep inside, sometimes it comes back to bitterness. Like we're not angry anymore, but we're still bitter. I want to preach today on a topic called poisoned and unaware. Admitting and confronting bitterness. Because I believe that a lot of us are either dealing with bitterness right now or we're going to deal with bitterness tomorrow. We're either holding in some bitterness inside of us right now or we're going to deal with it tomorrow. We're going to be tempted to deal with it tomorrow. And the first step to dealing with this poison called bitterness is defining it. It's hard for us to address something that we don't know. And more than that, it's hard for us to address something that we don't admit. Somebody say, this is for me. Come on, everyone, let's say, this is for me. Uh, this is for me. This is for all of us, I'd say, because I don't know where you're at in your walk with God, but I know that every single season, there will be a temptation for us to get bitter. So right now, do not think about the person next to you. Do not think about your tita, your tito, your classmate, your workmate. Oh, they're really bitter. Can you believe what he said to me last week? Huh? No. No. This is for us. This is for us. It's for us to admit and acknowledge what we can be dealing with so that we could address it. Amen? Is that okay? Well, the, uh, the dictionary defines bitterness as disappointment over unfair treatment. That disappointment can grow into anger. It can grow into gossip. It can grow into violence even. But it always starts with disappointment over unfair treatment. Here's how the Bible warns us with, with bitterness. In Hebrews 12, verse 15, it says here, Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Everyone, everybody say grace. The, I'd say the opposite of receiving that grace is actually bitterness. It says here, watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Why? Why does it say that? Because bitterness always finds bitter friends. Yes, that's right. When you were walking in your neighborhood and you saw that group of marites there, three to four people in there talking about their husbands, that's bitterness there. They, they found bitter friends. I, I want to challenge actually... Um, just our church a little bit, that if in our friendships we sp spend a substantial amount of time talking about what other people are doing wrong, we might be cultivating bitterness. In fact, if our friendships are built on talking about other people's lives and their faults and what we don't agree with, we might be cultivating bitterness. And I'm, I'm a Filipino, and so just like you, it's a natural gifting of mine to be quick 
with our words. Like Pastor James last week mentioned Australian sarcasm. Well, we have Filipino lait, right? <laughs> Filipino uh, smack talk, right? We're just still natural to us. But I want to challenge us. Like in our church, we need to get rid of all bitterness. Why? It's a poisonous root. Bitterness is not a topic we talk about in conference. There's no marriage conference that says, oh, enjoying forever letting go of bitterness. No. There's no conference that says, come on, youth camp, get rid of bitterness. There's nothing that talks about it like that. But can I tell you, bitterness has divided churches. Bitterness has capped ministries. Bitterness has broken marriages. Bitterness until right now is destroying families. Bitterness is doing so many things, but we actually don't talk about it. And here's why. Because unfortunately, I'd say a lot of us, myself included, would be unwilling to admit that we have, we have bitterness. Bitterness, I'd say, would have, um, it's like a poison that needs an opening. Like poison needs an opening. And I'd say it's the opening, it's kind of like a wound. The first one is someone who would legitimately hurt you. I thought of getting a henna tattoo for the sermon, but yeah, we're shuttling with a whiteboard marker. Art line 157R. The first opening that could uh, invite bitterness in would be a wound because someone hurt you. Whether unconsciously or consciously they hurt you, and so you got hurt by that. But the second opening where this poison of bitterness can come in is when someone didn't even do anything to you, they're just doing better than you. And they're just getting, they're just getting what you're wanting. Anyone here with me? Anyone ever felt like, wow, God answered their prayer? Come on, let's be honest here. Raise your hands if that, you felt that. Wow, they, were, they just opened up to me last week about something they're struggling. Wow, now, now they have a new boyfriend. Congratulations. Huh? Right? And, and, we're, and, we're so, and we're rejoicing. Wow, you got, the, you got the promotion. I've been praying for a job for two years. Praise God. See, these people didn't do anything bad about us, to us, but we're, st we're still bitter about them. Here's, here's how I define bitterness. It's an, a conscious or unconscious tendency to rejoice in other people's failures, mishaps, or faults. There's something inside of us that wants to say, see, I was right. I told you, but deep inside, we're rejoicing that we're right. But it's not only that, it's also a tendency to resent God's goodness in their lives. Because let's be real here, that's what bitterness is. It's us saying, how come God's good to them? How come they got that new car? How come they got that new boyfriend? Someone just ghosted me last week. How come they get that? Inside of us, there's something that rises up when we feel like God's being unfair. I remember there was a season in my life that I was quite struggling with our finances. I'm thinking of what job to do, what thing to, what thing to start, where to apply so that I could support my family better. And I was really praying. I might have came forward for prayer up the front, praying for financial breakthrough. I want to take my family to a vacation. This years ago. And so I'm praying, holding on to God. And then I went home, to, um, went home with Max, one of my closest friends, Jason Maximo. And he began to tell me how someone just gifted him an iPad Pro while I'm struggling with finances. And so in there, in, as we're in our conversation, I started to, you know, celebrate God's goodness with him. Wow, grabe, God's so good talaga, Max, no? Praise God. But inside of me, I'm struggling. Like, can we be real here? Inside of me, I'm like, what? How, how come you get that? You know what that's called? Bitterness. Th that, that's actually what we're dealing with. And if we're not aware of this, slowly but surely, it will damage us. Because someone's speaking to you, but you're busy not listening to them, but trying to find faults in them. Someone might be preaching right now like me, and if I did something to you unconsciously or consciously, who knows, right? And you're thinking, well, why does he get to preach? Someone might be talking to you genuinely about something they want to celebrate, but we're busy throwing out unnecessary criticism about them when they turn their backs behind us. Someone 
someone might just did something unaware that they're unaware of to you but then you went to your friend and you went and processed with them what happened to you but it's not processing it's gossiping if we're not if we're talking to people who aren't part of the solution it's gossip that's what it is if they're not going to do anything about it it's not it's not healthy processing it's unhealthy gossiping that's what it is so that's what bitterness is it can come in either through a wound because someone hurt you or through a wound not because someone hurt you but because we hurt ourselves thinking how come they get a better life how come they get to experience that are we on the same page now? That's the what of bitterness. Why? Now, why do we need to let go of all bitterness? Here's why. Ephesians, the verse before letting go of all bitterness. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says this. And do not bring sorrow. Everyone say sorrow. Sorrow to God's Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit can be grieved by us. The Holy Spirit can be saddened by what we do. He's a, a God, but He's also, he, the Holy Spirit is personified and He's the Spirit living inside of us. Remember, He has identified you as His own. The Holy Spirit is the mark that we are now God's people. And if God's people all of a sudden start acting like we're not God's people, and if we're honest, we do that a lot in the Philippines, then we grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave you. We just turn a deaf ear towards Him. It's not that he, starts, he stops talking to us. It's that we start tuning out from what He's saying. So why do we need to let go of all bitterness? My first point is this, because bitterness is like poison to our spiritual ears and an access key for the enemy. Bitterness is like poison to our spiritual ears. Slowly but surely, you will start to hear the Holy Spirit less as we hold on to either subtle or great bitterness that we have. I remember the first few years that I was involved in a, in a ministry in the church I was involved in at that time. I was a, I just came from my five-year trip from Backslideville and I was there serving and um, just starting my own journey and then I met this group of guys who was part of the worship team and because they're part of the worship team they're all so cool and in my immaturity because i was very insecure they're all dressed up nice they're leading with authority in god they're, do they're not doing anything arrogantly but if you've been insecure you know what we hate the most are secured people who are just confident in who they are like how dare they walk like that like with uh they're walking like that hey god's so good to me today hey is he good to you? Uh -huh, I want to worship the Lord right now. And I'm like, damn, they're doing better. Huh? And I just held on to this, this, th this thing. And it's like, I don't like them. I don't, I don't like them. I don't, I don't need to be a part of the worship team. I can sing. I can dance. No, no need for that anymore. And I, <laughs> later, sing and dance ministry time. <laughs> and I was, think, I was thinking, I was thinking, ah, I don't need to be a part of that until one day, God, so funny, He decided that these group of people became some of my closest friends in my life. It actually journeyed through college and um, all of us started, we started graduating, we started getting jobs. At some point, they started getting girlfriends. At some point, I started liking somebody and I was processing with them, this good kind of processing, processing with them what I should do. Like she smiles at me and I know that, not to brag, but my smile means something too. Why are you giggling? Is it that bad? Uh, and I was processing with this one of my friends who's from the worship team there and I'm talking to him and he began to ask healthy questions that signal his disapproval. Like, yeah, what do you think? Because I don't think your callings are aligned. Uh, I think you should rethink about it. And you know how I took that? I said, nah. In my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as I, as I walked away, I'm thinking, how dare he ask questions just because he's on the worship team? You're not my leader. And I didn't take his advice. I didn't reevaluate. And time has proven that that relationship didn't work out. And I could have listened to somebody, but I didn't. Why? There was a deep-seated bitterness 
in this bitterness isn't leaking. Like, we have a good friendship. Some of our bitterness isn't leaking. But they're there. And it stops us from listening to the Holy Spirit. It stops us from taking someone's advice and taking it into consideration with what we are deciding with. It is like poison to our spiritual ears. But maybe you're here and you're like, nah, Paul, I'm good. I can hear the Lord. Every day I post a selfie with my devotion. Psalm 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I post my dinner, bam, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we're doing all of this now. I'm good. I can hear God. My discernment is strong. I want to challenge you. Is it discernment or is it bitter judgment? Or are we masking our bitter judgment as spiritual discernment? Because sometimes they haven't even done anything to us. They're just really, really talented or gifted or blessed financially. And we think, something's wrong with that person. I can sense it, huh? I dreamt this morning. They were being chased by zombies like that. They're hiding something. But what if that you being chased by zombie, they being chased by zombies, is actually God revealing something to you that we're just insecure about them? Uh, that has happened to me so many times. Here's, here's what I realized. The wounds that we get from bitterness, we don't wait for the wounds to heal. We forgive and then we heal. We don't wait to get into a better state. We celebrate people regardless of what we're going through so that we can hear God. Because my prayer, if you get nothing from this sermon, my prayer is this, that we would not sorrow, give sorrow to the Holy Spirit, that we would seek to please Him, that we would go after what's pleasing to our Lord and Savior. That, that's my prayer. But sometimes we give an access key to the enemy. Sometimes we give an access key to the prince of darkness. Ephesians 4 verse 26 is what it says. Don't sin by letting your anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Somebody say foothold. That, that word there is the same Greek word used every time in the New Testament the word place is mentioned. So when Jesus went up early in the morning to go to a desolate place, it was actually the word foothold. The same Greek word was used, which means when we're angry, we give a place to the devil. When an anger always starts with what? Bitterness. Our anger always starts with bitterness. In the Amplified Translation, it actually says, don't let anger, don't let anger um, give a foothold to the devil. It, it actually says, harboring resentment and cultivating bitterness. Don't let har you harboring resentment and cultivating bitterness give a place to, to the devil. I want to encourage us today. Are we holding our wounds open for the enemy to enter our lives? Are we holding on to those wounds of offense, of bitterness, just because people are doing better, just because somebody said something to us 15 years ago, just to let the demons into our lives and so that he could partner with our bitterness with what we are doing. Some of us, and I've been there, some of us hold the door wide open for offense and we justify our judgment with this. They hurt me anyways. They're not good people anyway. Some, some of us host an open party for criticism where every single judgmental, unfair, opinionated comment is invited except encouragement. So, some of us have opened, openly empowered discouragement by withholding encouragement to other people. I want to encourage you today for where God is taking us, for where God is taking you, for what God has for your family, for the healing He has for you, for the destiny He has for your children, for where He wants you to go in the ministry, in your workplace, in your business. We should give no space for the devil. We should give no space for bitterness. For where God wants to bring you, you have no room for offense, no room for bitterness. We should put away all bitterness. Let's read that verse one more time. Ephesians 4 verse 31. Let all bitterness 
and wrath and anger and clamor, perpetual animosity, resentment. I don't know what that means as well. You can Google it. Resentment, no, it's, all, it's actually all just synonyms of bitterness. Animosity is disappointment because you're bitter. Resentment is deep-seated bitterness. Strife is a reaction because of your bitterness. And guess what fault-finding is? It's the national sport of the Philippines, fault-finding. We, oh, we are, we are MVPs in that, right? Can you imagine how many times in a day we find faults in other people? If I can have one peso for every fault that I've found in other people, we might have a building by now. Uh, we, we, are, we are naturally fault finders, but here's what the Word of God says. Let it be put away from you. You know what the, the word put away means? It means to take away by force. Not gently, by force. Have you ever, do you remember the time where we used to watch Spanish, Mexican teleseries? Remember that time? No one remembers? Marimar? What's the Cadena de Amor? Right? What else? I don't know, right? There was a time, and every time there would be a scene where there would, they would be in the forest, right? The leading lady would run in the forest like that. And then the, the leading man would be trailing behind, running after her. It's like, oh, my love is running. And then what would happen? Two things would happen every time there's a forest scene. Number one, there could be quicksand there. It's like, uh, uh, uh. or they, somebody would get bitten by a snake, right? And usually the girl would get bitten by a snake, <laughs> poison. What would the guy do? The guy, what would they do? What would he do? No, no, he would take away the snake by force, not like, oh, please, can you let go now? Nah. <laughs> you, you're going to poison her a little bit. No, he takes it away by force, and then he would suck the poison. That's what we should be doing with our bitterness. But what do we do? You can stay. No, that's what we, we would do. I've forgiven them. I'm not going to celebrate them when, I good, when they do a good job, but I've forgiven them. You can stay. That's what we do with our bitterness. How do I know I've been there? And sometimes, if I'm honest, I'm tempted to be there. Here's our second point. We need to force bitterness out with kindness and forgiveness. We need to force it out with kindness and forgiveness. We can't let it stay. We can't babysit bitterness. We can't let it cultivate in our hearts. We can't just let, just let some harmless comments in because we're good. We've forgiven them. We can't withhold our encouragement just because we're bitter. We need to force it out with kindness. We need to force it out with bitterness. Oh, can you imagine if we were a church that's kind if we were a church that's forgiving if we were a church that even though somebody hurt us we're still gonna celebrate them we're still gonna congratulate them can you imagine if we were a nation who would celebrate each other some of us here we have relatives we've been bitter about them for three decades now some of us here we have friends you haven't even seen them since elementary they stole your lunchbox and we're still bitter about them. Some of us here are bitter with, with our own family. Mother, father, spouse. We, we had Freedom Encounter yesterday and it was wild. It was, it's always wild in Freedom Encounter. It's very nice to see God setting people free. In all the times I've encountered the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ set people free from demons. You know that 95% of the time of the of the the wild cases we deal with, 95% of the time, it's actually unforgiveness. It's actually bitterness. It's actually things that start small and then start to grow big. We need to force it out with kindness and forgiveness. Amen? The verse after letting it go, for Ephesians 4 verse 32, here's what it says, Be kind and tender-hearted. Be kind and helpful to one another. Tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily. 
and freely. Not waiting for them to get better. Not waiting for them to apologize. Not waiting for our situation to get better so that we could celebrate them because now we're equal. No, readily and freely. Why? Just as God in Christ forgave you. He's forgiven us. He's forgiven us. He's given us so much. I wouldn't be here if Jesus Christ didn't forgive me. Here's, here's the thing. This word here, forgiving one another. Forgiving. We, we see that word in the Bible. We hear that in church. And we think that word is just, someone hurt us, we forgive them. That word forgiving is not that simple. This word forgiving actually is the verb form of the word grace which is synonymous in the Bible to the word favor, the very name of our church, the word charis. And so this, this, this word forgiving is not just forgiving someone because they hurt you. It's extending grace. It's extending favor. It's giving someone what they don't deserve. And maybe you're here and saying, Paul, you know, have no idea what they've done to me. And you're, you might be correct. I might have no idea what they've done to you. And you might be here saying it, it is hard. It is hard to just forgive somebody and say what, and do what you're saying to give undeserved favor, give undeserved grace. Yes, it is hard. Just like how what Jesus did for us is hard. Just like how the Son of God Himself laid His life down for you and for me on that cross. And in that moment, the Father actually withheld His presence from Him. And He, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's not easy. Here's the thing. Criticism is easy. Encouragement is intentional. Fault finding is natural. Finding something to praise in that person, that's challenging. But as Christians, we're called to do challenging things. We're called to do stuff that is not cultural, that's not natural to other people. Because if we're not doing that, then what sets us apart? If we're holding on to bitterness just like everybody else, then what sets us apart? Did you know that this verse, uh, this word, Ephesians uh, 4 verse 32, in the, word, the word they're forgiving, the same word is used when Jesus in Luke 7 verse 21 says, and He gave the gracious gift of sight to many who were blind. The same word that was used in forgiving is the same word that was used the giving of sight. I want to tell you right here, right now, what if what you're waiting to heal you is what you're withholding from that person? What if what you're waiting to hear God with is the very thing you're trying to keep inside of you? What if, what if God wants to launch your family, your ministry, your company into the next season, but we need to forgive. We need to extend grace to the ones who hurt us, but also to the ones who didn't hurt us. They're just doing better than us. What if today's the day we put an end to this crab mentality? What if today's the day we decide to say, God, I'm going to celebrate them? Because it's not them. It's your goodness to them. I'm going to celebrate your goodness to them. Ah, it, it, it is hard, but here's what I, I can tell you. Your wounds will never heal if you don't choose to forgive. Your bitterness, your comparison, your envy, your jealousy, it will never heal if we don't choose to forgive. We need to be the ones to decide to close those wounds so that God could begin to heal them. Maybe you're saying, I'm not ready to heal yet. Yeah, maybe you're not, but God is. And He's waiting for you to put an end to the bitterness that you're feeling. I, I, I know I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Especially, can I be honest? Especially if you're serving God. I, I think I don't, probably don't struggle as much with the letting go of what people do, do to hurt you because people hurt me all the time. I'm used to it. But it's, <laughs> oh no. Uh, you, I've just been through a lot in life. But I, I probably struggle more with the other one when people are doing better than I'm doing. And, I, and if we're honest, I think most of us would probably struggle with that a bit more. I remember as a, as a single person uh, before I, I was the, one of the people who was over-spiritual 
And I would say that marriage is not the goal. Jesus is enough. He's enough for me. And I, and I, and I, and I would say that, but deep inside of me. Jesus, can it be you and a spouse, please? Lord, if you come back before I get married, you're enough, but I feel like I've missed out naman. Like, like the, the, that, that's, that's what I honestly, honestly felt. And, and, and here's the thing about praying, believing for something. And, and as if you're serving in the church, then you walk with people, you love on people. I remember I'd love on people and I'd walk with them through their ups and downs and one friend and then a friend after, they'd stumble, help them get back up and then walk with them, journey with them like, hey, this, this is what I did to overcome that. And then like, come on, let's, let's walk. I'm going to walk the journey with you. Let's follow Jesus. I'm going to walk with them. And then we're praying together, believing that he's going he's gonna to get back up. He's going to start serving again, all of that. And the next, next week, next month, wow, they're engaged. And it would come up to paper news. Congratulations to Mimi and Momo for getting engaged. Congratulations. I'm like, wow, praise God. Lord, they were just struggling last week. I was the one counseling them. Ah. Now they get what I'm praying for. Wow, congratulations. And I would just, I would just wallow in my bitterness. I would be nonchalant in church. Oh, nonchalant. But deep inside, <laughs> I would always slide that word in. But deep inside, I am struggling with bitterness. I'm struggling with it. I decided, I remember there was a day I decided, okay, it ends right now. I'm not going to wait for my answered prayer to celebrate their answered prayer. I'm not going to wait for my breakthrough to celebrate their breakthrough. I'm going to celebrate God's goodness to them because my God, my God, He's been good to me. He's still good to me today. He withholds no good thing to those who walk righteously. My God, my God, I can celebrate. I can praise Your goodness whether it's in my life or in others, other people's life. I can celebrate it because it's Your goodness, Lord. It's your goodness. I can celebrate it all day long. I'm going to put an end to this right here, right now. I'm not going to wait to heal to forgive. I'm going to forgive and then I'll heal. I'm not going to wait to celebrate them before I, to, to be celebrated before I start celebrating them. I'm going to celebrate them regardless if what I'm going through is worthy of being celebrated. Here's the thing. I'm so grateful God didn't wait for me to heal. I'm so grateful other people didn't wait for me to get better so they can start giving me a chance. I'm so grateful my family didn't wait for me to get better. I was the worst brother you could ever imagine. When we lost our dad at the age of 12, for some reason, I became the father figure to my younger brother James, which is much loved in our church. One of the best people I know, smartest, kindness, just, just amazing. But man, when we were younger, my mom would hand us a knife and say, oh, here's the knife. Kill each other, right? That's what all parents do, right? When you're fighting, oh, kill each other now, nah, huh? You, you go fight, you go fight. Kill each other, right? We, were, we would fight. One time, James bit my knee when he was six years old, bit my knee. His milk teeth remained in my knee as he got out. His mouth, and we were just fighting. I would talk smack about him. I would just trash talk him with, with video games. And I really mistreated him. But what do I get from him? Nothing. I didn't get any reaction. I remember there was one significant sermon. Pastor James was preaching something about the older brother in our Shangri-La studio at that time. And I remember in that day, and during the ministry time, it was my very first time coming to James, hugging him. And just apologizing for everything. And saying, I'm sorry for this and that and that. You know what he said? He didn't say, hey, you should be sorry. He didn't say, hey, man, you did some bad things to me. You know what he said? This kind person just said, it's all good. It's all good. We were going through a lot. We were going through a lot. It's all good. It's all good. And he just treated me with kindness. So much kindness. If what happened to my dad, his, his early death, because of um, mental health issues, his early death is my life's tragedy, my mom's response 
is God's goodness to me. If you know my mom, he's on the, uh, if you don't know her, he's on the Instagram of favor.kids. You can look it up there. <laughs> it's that little reel there, super cute. You can also see our house and our village in there. Uh, my mom, man, she went through a lot. Husband decides to give up. You know what she did? She responded with nothing but kindness. Never heard a single word about her being bitter with God. Never acted in any way about her being bitter with our dad. We were horrible kids as well. I would go home from the computer shop at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., just out there gambling. I would go home smelling like alcohol and then saying, oh, it's the person beside me on the jeepney. Uh, they're just drinking. Ay, nako talaga, mga people ngayon. But I'd go home like that and he would just, she would just, hey, encourage me, let's go to church on Sunday. Every single time. She had all the right to be bitter with God and with people. But she didn't hold on to any of it. And he passed on kindness and forgiveness to her children. And I'm here, and James is serving the Lord, leading people, not because of our character, gifting, skill set, not because of any of that, but because our mom decided to pass kindness instead of bitterness. If she didn't, I'd be out there drinking. I'd, be still, I'd still be addicted somewhere. But somebody decided to end it, put, it and put an end to it today. Here's my question for you. What are you passing on? What are, what are we passing on to the next generation? Are we going to pass on bitterness? Or are we going to pass on kindness? And you, you might be saying, I'm not that bad. But if I'm, I'm, pro I'm promising you, if there's even a little bit of bitterness, it's going to be exposed. It's going to be felt. It's going to be passed on. I'm so grateful that my God, my God, He passed on kindness to me. That even though I was following the ways of the world, indulging in the ways of the prince of darkness, I was indulging in the desires of my human mind and my flesh because He is so rich in mercy with a great and wonderful love in which He loved us. We, even though I was dead and separated from God because of my sin, oh, He made me alive in Jesus Christ. He raised me up with Him and seated me with Jesus Christ in the heavenly realms. That's like what it says in a Ephesians 2 verse 6 and in verse 7 here's what it says he did all of this so that in the future in verse 7 God can point to us as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us I want to be an example of God's grace and kindness that he used he uses now this lips who used to lie a lot now to preach the truth of God his mind that sometimes still struggles with deception to preach having a sound mind. I'm so grateful that God has, has blessed me so much, but I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying that till the day I die when I pass on to the other side of eternity, that I'm going to be an example of the incredible wealth of His grace and kindness towards us as shown in all He has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. When people look at our hearts, when God looks at our hearts, Will, will he be able to say, that's an example of person who received grace and kindness? Or will he say, oh, there's a little bit of bitterness there. What's it going to be? But you know what? To God, it didn't matter. He died for us anyways. He died for you and for me, regardless of how, we're, how we are going to respond and how we're going to take this message and whether we're going to deny it he died for you anyways. You're sick of being in church again because your parents dragged you in. He died for you anyways. Maybe you're here saying, God, you've disappointed me. Hey, he died for you anyways. Maybe you're bitter against God because He didn't answer your prayer. Hey, He died for you anyways. And I don't know about you, but the fact that Jesus died for me and that He was resurrected, raised up from the grave, now giving me eternal life just on response, in response, in response to all that I've done. Man, I'm going to give Him kindness. I'm going to raise God with all that I have. I don't know where you're at, but here's what I know. Jesus died for us anyways. He died for you and for me.
He took on the punishment that we deserve because of our bitterness, our slander, our gossip, our anger, all the things that we've done. It's against the will of God. He died for us, took on the punishment meant for you and meant for me, but because death could not hold him down. Because he's spotless, sinless, blameless, and beautiful. Three days after he rose again, and he's now offering you eternal life. That eternal life doesn't start on the other side of eternity. It starts right here, right now, where you can encounter the God of peace, the God of joy, the God of rest, the God of hope, the God who gives you purpose. But he's waiting for you to say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I changed my mind about my sin. Today, I'm going to make a decision to make you my Lord and Savior. With all heads bowed, all eyes closed, if that is you, and you know that you know that you don't have an active relationship with Jesus Christ, you know that you know that you don't have an active conversation with God every single day, you know that you know that there are other things taking priority in your life. There, that Jesus is not at the center with all heads bowed, all eyes closed, no one looking around. If that is you today, you're saying, Paul, that's me. I'm willing not just to pray a prayer, but to believe and follow through with my heart that Jesus is Lord, that He died for me, that He rose again. If that is you, I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. Jesus wants you to come to Him again. Maybe you did this before, but you know you walked away from God. Today's the day. It's the day for salvation. If that is you, I'm going to count to three. And I want you to lift up your hand so I know who I'm praying for. One, two, three. Lift up your hand if that's you. Thank you, Jesus. See those hands here? Up here in the middle. Thank you, Lord. Here in the side. Thank you, Jesus. Here in the side. Thank you, Lord. Up the back. Thank you, Jesus. Here on the other side. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your humility. Just a few more moments. I believe there's some more people who want to respond to God, but you're too ashamed to do it. You can respond to God right now. He's not waiting for your perfection. Lift your hands if that's you. Thank you, Jesus. You're on the side. Thank you, Lord. The other side. Thank you, Jesus. If you lifted up your hands, can we all put our hands on our hearts together as we all pray? As a family, let's pray this together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Please forgive me for my sin. I changed my mind about every single thing that I've thought of, that I've done, that I've said. And today, Lord, I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. Please be my Lord. Please be my Savior. Please be my everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate every single person who made that decision? That was wonderful. You made it the best decision you can ever make. Later on, some people are going to talk to you, explain the decision that you just made. And we're going to walk you in the journey because life with God is not meant to be done alone. It's meant to be done in community. If you're watching online, you can, you can message us in all our accounts and we'll respond to you, help you in that journey that you are now taking. For, all, for the rest of us, could we all stand to our feet? Could we all acknowledge the presence of God in this place? I don't know about you, but I, as I was writing this message, as I'm preparing it, I've been very convicted with my own bitterness. Is there anyone else who's like that? Is there anyone else who feels like today's the day, okay, I'm going to let go of every single thing that's in me, that's withholding me from releasing encouragement, from releasing forgiveness to other people. And the root of that, the root of our bitterness is actually our lack of understanding and our lack of embracing of the goodness of God. That what He's done for us is enough. What, I've done, what He's done for us is enough. Sometimes you don't feel like praising God. But here's the good news. Sometimes when we praise God, we start to believe it a bit more. Sometimes we're going to lift a hallelujah. Halal means thank you. Y Yahweh, it's, yeah, it's short for Yahweh. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes when we lift it up, we start, to we start to develop and cultivate inside of us an attitude of gratefulness. So if that's you right now and you're saying, God, I want to praise you in this moment. I don't want to dwell on my envy, jealousy, comparison. I don't want to dwell on my bitterness. If that's you, you're saying, God, I want to lift you up. You deserve my worship from the front to the back. Could we begin to lift our 
our hands really high to God because He don't deserve our half worship. He doesn't deserve our partial worship. He deserves our full, our full surrender to God. That's a sign of surrender. Lord, we lift our hands to You and right now in this moment, oh God, we say we worship You. We say we thank You, God. What You've done for us, oh, it is enough, Jesus. We cry out hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, from the front to the back, can we sing it out? Can we sing hallelujah? Here's the thing, this, this topic that we just talked about today, there's not a little thing that God's just annoyed about. I believe this is one of the main plagues in this nation, is there's a culture of bitterness and there's families trapped in it. But all heads bowed, all eyes closed. If, if this is you and you're saying, today I'm putting an end to my bitter thinking. You might not be bitter about anyone, but you know you're so easily tempted to harbor bitterness, to cultivate resentment in you. If you're here, you're saying, I'm putting an end to it right now with all eyes closed. If that is here saying, Paul, yeah, that's me. I'm going to respond to God. I'm going to surrender, not just my big bitterness, but the small ones where I refuse to celebrate other people. If that is you, could you lift your hands to heaven? If that is you, so many hands lifted up. I want to encourage you, if you're lifting your hands as a sign of surrender to God, as you saying, prophetically in the physical realm as you say I'm moving forward from my bitterness I want to invite you to come to the front come to the front and some of our leaders and pastors will just pray for you but we need you to say what you're actually bitter with so you could release forgiveness to people this might not be for everyone but if you are bold enough to say yeah that's me yeah that's me I'm gonna release bitterness I'm not gonna hold on to it anymore if that is you I want to invite you to come forward for the rest of us we're here, we exist to worship God, wherever you're at. As they begin to start praying for people, start asking them what they need to release forgiveness to. We're gonna begin to worship our God. We're gonna sing, here I am to worship. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together. Together, lovely, all too. 
Across the room, if you are, you've struggled with bitterness, and maybe it's against some friend, some classmate, maybe it's against God, and you feel like He's treating you unfairly. If that is you, come on, could you lift your hands all across the room? If you're saying, God, today I'm choosing to let go of it. Lord, today I'm gonna choose to let go of all bitterness, all tendencies to be bitter. Come on, if that is you, could you lift your hands nice and high to heaven? Jesus, you see our hands right now. Come on, with your own words, say, God, I'll let go of my bitterness. If it's against you, Lord, I'm sorry, God, I'll let go of it. If it's against my parents, I'll let go of it. Come on, wh whoever that is against, come on, we begin to let go of our bitterness. God, thank you that you didn't wait for us to heal. Thank you that you didn't wait for us to get better. Lord, thank you that we can now worship you, enter, your presence even though we hurt you even though we were bitter against you even though we rebelled against you God we thank you that right here right now we can lift our hands nice and high as a sign of surrender because our King God you've paid it all for us you've paid it all for us come on from the front to the back if you're thankful for what Jesus done for you can you begin to lift up a song to God can you begin to lift up your worship to Jesus Lord we thank you Lord we thank you God we're thankful for all that you've done for us Oh, we're thankful. Come on. Can you begin to cry out to Jesus? If you want a greater sense of the gospel that he died for you, can you begin to sing it out from the front to the back? I'll never know. I'll never know. Come on, can you sing it out? Oh, sing it out to Jesus right now. how not to be bitter. We thank you that we serve a God that shows us how to love purely. We thank you that we have a God that has forgiven us and therefore we can forgive other people. Right now we worship you, Father. We honor you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your example. And we ask for your strength right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you're still here, and you're still being prayed for, you're still having your moment, that's okay, uh, we'll keep things low. But uh, we just wanna encourage you, if, if something today uh, has really hit you, we encourage you to start talking to a leader, your connect leader, uh, our pastors and the staff, 
uh, process with someone. Uh, this might not be a one-time thing. This might be a journey that, that has started today, uh, especially if, if it's been years of, of bitterness or whatever it is. Uh, our team, we are here. We would want to walk with you in this journey and, and just how to get better and, and remind you that this walk is not meant to be done, be done alone. Is that okay? Hey, can we honor Pastor Paul? What an amazing word. Uh, we are all going to make changes <laughs> from our lives from now on. That's awesome. Uh, I, like I said, if you're still having your moment, it's okay. You can slowly go back to your seats. If you're still here being prayed for, uh, you can stay if our leaders are still praying for you. But really quickly, up on the screen, we want to show you some four things, top four, uh, four things uh, that you need to know that is happening in the life of our church. And on Wednesday, April 24th is our family night. It's happening at our favor studio next Wednesday at our Shangri-La Plaza. Uh, so if you're a, a leader, a volunteer, or still wanting to, wanting to volunteer, you guys can go ahead and come there. I believe the sign up, you can sign up. RSVP to sign up uh, is on the link, favor.church slash Manila News. The details are going to be there. Also, we have Child Dedication Sunday happening on Sunday, May 5. It's happening here at our Crown Plaza Galleria. So if you have a child and you want them to be dedicated to Jesus, that is the Sunday that is happening. You guys can also visit the link to sign up for that. Favor Business Breakfast is also happening on May 11. Uh, you have to register for our conference first at favor.church slash conference. This is open only to people who are registered for our conference. I believe that is happening at the Marco Polo uh, during our conference weekend. And last but not least, Favor Conference 2024 is happening on May 9 to 11 at the Metro 10 Convention Center. So if you have not yet signed up, please go to favor.church slash slash conference to sign up. If you need financial assistance, please don't let that be the reason that you can't come to conference. We have options there to help you. And last but not least, if you got a new people bag, uh, we have our team that wants to just get to know you, get to know you a little bit more because we know and we believe that this journey is not meant to be done alone. Also, if you've raised your hand and prayed that prayer of salvation, if someone does not come to you, uh, we have our team outside uh, that just wants to get to know a little bit more about you. Is that okay? All right, can everyone quickly stand up? And uh, who here wants a week of favor and blessing? Please raise your hand and let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you have given us an example of how not to be bitter. I pray for every single person that is here. I pray that this week would be a week of just changing and trying to get better. We pray for favor and blessing for marriages to be hotter and sweeter. We pray for blessing and favor for students this week as they study. We pray for people that are going to work, for business owners, for employees. God, give them wisdom as they work. Give us joy. Give us your favor and your blessing that would follow us this week. We thank you. We love you. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming to church, everyone. Take someone out for lunch today and we will see you next week.